Hello and welcome to another episode of Project Supercar, the channel where I've built my own DIY supercar, and this is the prototype, using an old Audi estate as the main donor car and a Ford Cougar to donate the roof. Now in this episode we're going to continue on with the fabrication of this roof and also we'll cover the windscreen wipers which are tucked down here. Well actually this car's only got one wiper. Now, in the last episode, you will have seen how I chopped off the roof from the second donor car, which was a Ford Cougar, and then I just placed it onto the chassis. Now, it all lined up really well, but I needed it to be perfect, okay? So when you place the roof from your donor car to your chassis, you've got to make sure it's straight with the chassis and it's not twisted in any way. You don't want it leaning to the left or the right or anything like that. So, before I could actually complete the roof, the actual positioning of it, I had to put the two side pods in first and I'll explain why. Now, with the roof just placed on top of the chassis, I couldn't carry on with the welding and the metalwork fabrication until I knew that it was centralised. Now, for me to do that, I needed several datums on the chassis to make sure everything lined up. So the next stage I did was I started to make the side pods on each side of the car. Now, the woodwork on this is the same wood. In, in other words, you have the same template, you cut two pieces of wood out, you separate them, they're exactly the same, and you fit them either side of the chassis. I then made the fuel tank pod area here, again using the same technique. So you have one template and then you cut it out of two pieces of wood at the same time, you separate them and then they're the same either side of the car. Once this pod was built, I was able to finish off the wiring, I could put the ECU in here and I was very close to actually doing a first engine start and a test drive, which we will cover in, hopefully, in the next episode or the one after that, we'll see. But this also had another purpose, because I knew that I'd have to modify the rear part of the Cougar roof, cut it off, and then I'd have to build all this, which is made out of steel, and then I needed it to match the datum, which was this pod here. But for now, the pods were made, and then I could get to work centralizing the roof. With the side pods built, I now had some datums to measure too, but I needed the chassis to be level in both directions. Now at this stage in the build, the chassis was supported by its own suspension and it was running on tires and wheels, but I wasn't going to trust that to see if the chassis was level. So what I did is I used uh, scissor jacks like this all the way around the chassis just to tweak it and level it, a little bit like a pull table. With the chassis level in both directions and the side pods bolted in place, I now have all my datums ready to go. So I use this area here, which is where the old aerial was fitted on the Ford Cougar. and I dropped a plumb bob string down through this hole and into the cabin area. I could then measure from the plumb bob out to each side pod to centralise the roof. I could then take several measurements between the pods and the roof and compare them either side of the car to make sure they matched. And when they matched, I knew the roof was centralised. I'm hoping you can make this out, and I know the light's not great, but I'm trying my best. Now that the roof was centralised, and I was happy with the positioning of the roof, I needed to create something to support the rear part of the roof. This car is supposed to have a roll-over hoop 
along the back here and there is going to be some uh, sort of roll cage style bracing that will live inside here to give the chassis some more stiffness and to give you some protection if you're in an accident. Now I don't know the size of the rollover hoop or anything like that until the roof is actually finished and it's made out of fiberglass because remember this is just a plug. So for now I had to just use some um, rollover cage tubing and I just had to cut it off and I didn't know the length and then I made these blocks of wood here that then supported this roof and kept it in the position that I wanted it to be. With the roof in its final position I could then get to work on making the door openings. These are actually made out of steel. Now this side pod is actually clamped onto the chassis, it's not actually bolted to the chassis, it's clamped to the chassis with another piece of wood on the inside with some bolts. Now I'll show you that and it worked out really well um, when it came to the rubber strip. Some of you may have noticed that I'm using the original door seal from the Ford Cougar. To make it fit this opening all I did was cut the lower part of the seal away and then folded it into here. Here's the join. Now the plan is to make some sort of nice little bit of trim that goes over the top of this, something hard wearing, maybe a bit of stainless and then that'll look fine. But let's just pull this stripping away and then we can take a look at the metalwork. And here we have this metal piece here which will be fiberglass once the moulds are made. With the weather stripping pulled back we can actually see some of the metalwork here. This piece of metal trim is actually screwed to the inside of the woodwork inside the car. I'll show you that now. Okay, I hope you can see this. I'm really struggling with the light at the moment. It's a really miserable grey, rainy day outside so there's no sunshine and some of my bulbs have popped in my workshop so bear with me. But I'm hoping you can make this out. What we have here is some plywood that bolts through the chassis but not into the chassis and clamps the outer pod in place. Then this metal bar strip is screwed into this plywood. Now with some careful measurement this piece of bar lined up perfectly with the original Ford flange from the Ford Cougar. So all I had to do now was come in and weld in some extra metal work to join up the interior flange with the new lower flange. I hope that makes sense. Now I'm afraid I don't have many pictures of when I was making the door opening here. Uh, it's very labour intensive, loads of measuring, checking, double checking, that sort of stuff. It's, you know, so I didn't really take many pictures, but I do have a couple of pictures to show you. Now again, the process of building this car I make two identical pieces of metalwork and then I apply them to both sides of the car and if they fit then I know that the car is still true and it's all lined up and everything's how it should be. If I find that one side doesn't fit then I know I've got a problem somewhere. Anyway, once I started to fabricate the metalwork around this door opening I just tacked it into place and then I lifted the whole roof off the chassis and here's a picture in my garage sort of suspended in mid-air with the welder and then I could get inside the roof area and start to stitch it up with a little bit more strength. I'm hoping you can make out the actual the bar, the, um, the flat bar there and it all lined up perfectly, it worked out really well after a lot of measuring. And Here's another picture at a slightly different angle. You should be able to tell, you can see the old Cougar metalwork, you know, at the top part, and then down this sort of area here is where the bar was welded into place. Uh, just another picture, I'm afraid, no different from the last one, really. Um, 
But anyway, that gives you an idea of how the roof structure was coming together and both sides are the same. Now once I'd got that frame in place, I could then, using the screws, actually bolt the roof to the woodwork inside of the chassis, which was then clamped to the outer pod, bear with me, and now the roof was structurally part of the car. And then I could move on to the next stage, which was a test drive, but we'll cover that in a next episode or future efforts episode. But I'm afraid that's the only pictures I've got of this stage of the roof. I've got more pictures later on when I did the rear part, but we'll do that in another episode. But for now, the roof is in place, but then I had to move on to the windscreen wiper. Now it might surprise you, but I was actually designing the windscreen wiper way back early on in the design of the chassis. Because I knew from day one that I was going to run out of space in this area here. Because what I've done is I've squashed the roof down and I've pulled the floor up and basically left no space here for a second wiper. So I knew pretty much from day one that I was only ever going to have a single wiper on this car. Which is fine, many supercars out there have single wipers. In fact, one of them, which happens to be one of my favourite supercars of all time, is the Lamborghini Countach. Next up with the Countach, we gotta talk windshield wiper. Now, a quick glance at this windshield wiper, you already realize it's gigantic. It has two huge wiper arms. In fact, if you look closely, you'll see that it has two windshield wipers. But the problem with this giant windshield wiper is, of course, like everything else in this car, it was designed ridiculously. And so, when it wipes the windshield, it stops directly in front of your face. Take a look at it from the inside. And now take a look at it from the outside. Yes, that's right. Everything to the left of your left eye isn't wiped and to the right of your right eye is wiped. So when you're driving down the street, your field of vision is only half clear if you're driving this car in the rain. Okay, maybe that's not the best wiper mechanism in the world but you can see how the engineers tried to solve the problem of a low slum car, large windscreen, and not much space for multiple wipers. Another application that I was looking at is the one from the Mercedes-Benz, like this one. However, there were some issues with that. First, it means you've got to source more parts from another donor car, which I wanted to try and avoid. And secondly, the mechanism on that, the motor assembly, just wouldn't fit in here anyway. And then, of course, you've got the other problem of trying to solve the wiring issue. You've got to get an Audi wiring glue and switch gear to operate a Mercedes wiper arm. So I had to go back to the drawing board on that one. So, the windscreen wiper was actually being designed way back when I first started this project and then it came to the stage where I had to really finalise the actual design. Now here's a picture and I was actually messing about with a pentagraph style wiper and I was designing my own wiper mechanism that used the original Audi motor. So the idea was is you take the Audi motor from the donor car which is free and it works with the Audi wiring loom and the Audi switch gear and then I would supply sort of the mechanism and it all bolts together. Unfortunately, when I priced that up, it was just too expensive. So the pentagraph style wiper mechanism had to be put on the back burner until the funds were available. So I had to make do with a single arm wiper like this one so I ended up buying a uh, normal sort of spindle, an off-the-shelf universal spindle like this one, which you can get at most places, you know, kit car companies. They're not that expensive. Um, and then what I did is I made a series of brackets that would hold the original motor assembly. And here's a picture like this. So there's the original Audi motor, which is bolted to a 
bracket that I made myself. And here we go with, and that's just another angle of it, so you can see it. And here's some, here's some pictures of the bracket, powder coated without the motor in place. Now one of the things about the windscreen wiper motor assembly is I didn't want it bolted to any fiberglass that might cause fracturing or weakness over time. So I wanted it bolted to some metal framework of the chassis. And again, this is all designed way back at the beginning, even before all this was in its place. I mean, here's some pictures. Unfortunately, it's not great, but this is very early crude mock-up of the chassis with the bulkhead. And there's some tape there, and there's like an N mark that I've made with a marker. And that is the position of where the pivot had to be, if you like, to get the arc on the windscreen. Not the best pictures, you know, bear with me on this. Um, that's looking through the bulkhead um, with the um, heater blower removed. You can see the two seats. Uh, there's another angle. It's very tight in there. I didn't have much space, even though I was sort of designing this um, to have some space. There's another picture of it underneath the dashboard, the bulkhead area. So, I think I'll just bring the camera in quickly and show you underneath and hopefully you can see what I was trying to do. Sorry for the shaky cam, but I can't even get my gimbal in here, it's that tight. Please forgive all the roughness of this, this is the prototype, this is proof of concept and not the finished car. As you can see, there's the motor and you can see the bracket that I made, the bracket bolts onto the chassis, so it's not bolted to any of the bodywork, so it's very stable. That is the Audi motor unit. There is the arm that runs across here. You can just make it out. And then you can see the spindle there. And then obviously that attaches to the wiper arm itself. And yes, it does work, as can be seen in the next clip. <laughs> so it does work and it's quite affordable. However, I would like to go back to a pentagraph design if I can afford it. Now, luckily, there are some mainstream manufacturers out there that now actually supply their cars with a pentagraph style wiping system and they're very cheap so that might be a good way to go I believe one of them is the I think it's the Peugeot 106 or something here's a video clip of a Lotus Esprit with a Peugeot pentagraph style wiping arm fitted it looks quite good So that's something I'm going to look at in the future when I do the turbo build. But another area that I've got to complete is the rain guttering on this section here. As you can see, if it rains, the rain's going to come down here, down here, and straight inside the car. Not great. Again, this is the prototype, and there is supposed to be some form of removable fiberglass panel here. It will go across the car and it will allow the rain to basically run down this section of the car here. But I can't make that panel until I finalize the design of the windscreen wiper arm and mechanism. But I'll cover that when I get into the turbo build sometime in the future. And of course, once I'd finalized the prototype design of the windscreen wiper mechanism, I made some drawings. Oh, one thing I do want to show you is how the bulkhead and the roof fit together. So I think what I'll do is I'll just nip into the garage and show you the Audi um, bodywork there and then we'll come back here and I'll show you how the two marry up. So here we are in the Audi 2.7 twin turbo donor car and you can see this area here. This is where the windscreen used to bond to. I'm going to use this flange here, I'll make a fiberglass version of this um, bulkhead because the Cougar roof, or a fiberglass version of that, as it's lowered down, will be bonded to this flange here. 
So imagine that Audi bulkhead underneath here, you lower down the Cougar roof or a fiberglass version of it and then it is bonded together across here. And yes, the curves do actually match. Okay, so that's windscreen wipers and door openings. Not the most exciting thing to talk about when designing your own supercar, but there are areas that you need to consider. When getting into your supercar, I always feel that the door opening should be a little bit of a compromise, so you feel like you're getting into something special. But maybe not too compromised, like maybe the Gompert Apollo. But I think this door opening is just right. There's enough space for you to get in and out, but also just enough of a compromise to make you feel like you're getting into something special. Anyway, I think that'll do for this episode. So until then, I'll see you in the next one, and I hope we will be doing a test drive and an engine startup. So until then, bye for now. Yeah, this is an event. <laughs>